as we move from our ball position alignment pillar, the third pillar, we move into the fourth pillar of our seven pillar swing. And, and this is the critical movement in the golf swing itself. If I can get the club started away from the ball correctly, I really enhance my chances of being able to make a repeatable golf swing. The one thing that we see, player after player, it, it become very inconsistent with the takeaway, both in terms of the speed and the motion or movement on the golf club. I want this movement to be so simple that you absolutely don't have to think about it at all. The one thing in my teaching that I think sometimes is, is lost between uh, most pupils and other instructors is, I want you to feel comfortable that we are learning motion. These are seven pillars and there are positions that we're going to pass through, but once that golf club goes into motion, I'm really teaching you to dance. I want this to be motion, not stop points, so to speak, in the golf swing. So as we begin this movement, we're going to talk about positions that we're just moving through and not to. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about here as we begin the movement of the golf club, when you see here in a setup position, I go with, with my grip, I get my hands on the club comfortably, nice and relaxed in the shoulders and arms, good shoulder width stance with my feet, and now I'm in a position where I can just stay comfortable here and I can begin the movement of the golf club. Now, this is a movement that I want to be a single movement, not a series of, of movements moving independently of each other. All we're trying to do as we begin the golf swing is to just let the club move back to the waist high position so that you can see that the club shaft, my feet, are all in alignment and parallel to the target line. Now, I see all different ways that people try to do this. I see people try to make this move with their hands. I see people try to make this move with their shoulders. I want to show you what I believe is one of the simplest and easiest ways to do this. The thing that I'm going to try to teach you, and I'll set this club down here for just a moment, is we're going to learn to set up in our stance, in our posture position here, and I would like for you to just make a fist with your left hand. If you were to make a fist and you were going to hit something, that left wrist is just in a solid position. I think there's a lot of confusion today when we talk about the left wrist, we talk about flat left wrist versus cup left wrist. The thing that I like to believe and teach is if you make a fist, there's a slight indentation here when you close your hand. If I have my fingers and arms and hand extended, it's flat or straight. But if I close my hand, you can see there's just a slight break right there in the wrist. If I were to hit something, I want to be in a solid position. If my wrist gets too flat and I try to hit something, it would bow and break my wrist. If my wrist is too cupped and I hit something, it's going to jam my wrist this way. So in our set position, we're simply going to keep it as simple as possible in the fourth pillar and just make a fist in that position. From there, I want you to take your right index finger, just like you're pointing, and just put it in the lifeline and close your fingers around your hand, just like that. So we'll make a fist, index finger there, Take your fingers and thumb and wrap it around your left wrist with your right hand, and then just close that. Close the left hand. From here, all I've got to do is bend my right elbow and maintain the angle of that fist or hitting position all the way to the top of my backswing. Once I do that, when I begin that takeaway, that club is going to stay on path, the club is going to be in position, and it's going to free me up to turn right up to the top of my backswing. The best thing I like about the fourth pillar, you can do what I'm doing right here at home every day and that's just going to make it that much more simple for you. I think by learning to get this position here, you can make that takeaway and learn where those hands go without any thought or effort. Now, let's do that with the golf club here just a moment. I've got a club in my hand here. We're going to set up, simulate that same sensation here, and now all we're doing is turning up on the backswing and just let the takeaway happen right there. Once you do that, you'll see as we make that takeaway, the left thumb placement like we talked about at the beginning with the grip is just to the right of center. That left thumb is critical to be just about two o'clock on that grip because the thumb helps me keep the club from rolling inside. One of the common faults that I see is players get the thumb directly on top or the 12 o'clock position on the grip and the first thing they do is they roll the hands, the arms go away from them, the club goes inside and behind them, 
and we've disconnected the body and our arms and we're unable to make that swing from there. So I want to get that left thumb and keep that grip that we've talked about in the first pillar. And from there, we're simply going to maintain this left wrist angle and just very slowly turn the club to the top. That club will just move back there over and over. You can practice this at home. I think it'll make all the difference in the world in your game.